For more on the latest on Capitol Hill, I'm joined now by Republican Congressman from New York, Mike Lawler. Congressman Lawler, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Kristen. I want to pick up where I just left off with Ryan. Paul Gosar became the third House Republican to call for Speaker Johnson's ouster today. As of right now, as you and I have this conversation, do you think Speaker Johnson is in danger of losing his job? Uh, look, this is a decision for the entire House. Uh, we saw what happened in October when eight Republicans teamed up with 208 Democrats to remove Speaker McCarthy and throw the House into three and a half weeks of chaos uh, at a moment in which Israel was under attack. Uh, I think this is a decision that everyone in the House needs to take extremely seriously and put aside a partisan political gain and look at what is happening. Speaker Johnson is making a decision, mm. the right decision, to put aid on the floor for our allies at a moment uh, in which they are under assault by our adversaries. China, Russia, and Iran are a grave threat to the free world. Uh, and he is doing the right thing, showing American resolve and leadership in this moment. And I think it's incumbent on the institution, Republicans and Democrats, uh, to look at it for what it is uh, and say, we're not going to participate in throwing our government into chaos. Democrats talk, talk a lot about preserving democracy. This is a moment for them to show that they're serious about that and not join in the effort with a few folks on the right to upend our government. So let me be very clear with you. I mean, if it takes Democrats to save Speaker Johnson, to save his speakership, are you comfortable with that? You would welcome Democrats bailing him out. It's not a function of Democrats bailing him out. It's a function of all of us doing the right thing by the American people. Uh, this is a, a very serious moment in our history. Uh, frankly, we are in the most precarious time since World War II. Uh, and I think, obviously, we are a very divided country. We're in a divided government. Republicans control the House. Democrats control the Senate and the White House. We need to find compromise and ways to work together. That's the only way major pieces of legislation are ever going to become law. And it would take every Democrat agreeing Let's be clear about this. They would have to proactively agree with Paul Gozar and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Thomas Massey to remove Speaker Johnson. So that is a choice that they would proactively make. What I'm suggesting is they should make it clear they're not going to be party to this. We saw what happened in October when 208 Democrats teamed up with Matt Gates. It was destructive. It didn't result in Democrats taking control of the House. Uh, and this will not result in Democrats taking control I, in the House. I, but it, what it will do is cause chaos, and that is something that all of us should be saying we're not going to be party to. And just to be very clear, of course, the ouster of Speaker McCarthy was an effort that was led by your fellow Republicans. I want to play some yep. of what your colleagues today said about the Speaker. Get your reaction on the other side. Take a listen. I definitely uh, sense that there's a souring um, you know, to Republican leadership, and not just in the House Freedom Caucus, um, with other people as well. So, um, you know, I think that the Speaker should take that seriously. Well, there's continued frustration with the fact that we're allowing the, uh, uh, frankly, allowing the House to be governed by Democrats. That frustration is continuing. When you hear that, Congressman, and, and this goes back to my first question, when you hear your fellow Republicans express frustration with the speaker. Do you think he could lose his job? Look, obviously there's that possibility. You have three people that have said they are uh, prepared to move forward with a motion to vacate. Uh, but what is comical about the comments uh, from my colleagues is that the reason the speaker's hand was weakened uh, in negotiations, inclusive of negotiating border provisions, uh, is because of their conduct throughout this entire Congress, their inability to work as a team uh, and pass a rule. Uh, you know, Chip Roy is on the Rules Committee and voted against the rule in committee, has voted against the rule on the floor. Mm -hmm. Eli Crane voted to oust Speaker McCarthy. For, so for them to cast blame on Speaker Johnson or 
uh, Republicans uh, within the conference who want to govern uh, is comical. The reality is this, if they wanted border security, which I do, uh, I voted for H.R. 2, I voted for a CR with H.R. 2, mm -hmm. I introduced defending borders, defending democracies, which would reenact Title 42 and remain in Mexico while providing lethal aid uh, to our allies. None of them co-sponsored it. Uh, they have done everything they can to undermine our ability to uh, negotiate from mm -hmm. a position of strength, and that is why there's not border uh, security in this package. But we are in a, a situation where America must lead. We have an obligation as leader of the free world, and if we shirk in our responsibility to do that, there will be a new world order with China, Russia, and Iran at the helm, and that will be good for no one, least of all the United States of America. Well, Congressman, let me follow up with you on that very point. Of course, uh, the foreign aid package is heading to a vote tomorrow, likely, it seems like, and, and that is, as you just say, because Democrats supported the ability for that to move forward. Some of your fellow Republicans, your colleague Bob Good, says there's currently a, quote, coalition government in the House. What's your reaction to that? And if it takes Democratic votes to get Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan aid passed, are you comfortable with that? Yes, look, we're in a divided government. Apparently, some of my colleagues have never been married before. You have to be willing to compromise. Uh, and the reality is Democrats control the Senate and the White House. We control the House. There's going to be a negotiation. What the Speaker has allowed for is up or down votes on each of the individual aid packages. Some of my Republican colleagues are going to vote no on Ukraine. I suspect there will be many Democrats voting no on Israel. Uh, and so everyone will be able to voice their opinion. Uh, and But that's what democracy is. That is what our constitutional republic allows. We're here to govern, to negotiate. It's not easy. We don't live in a dictatorship. Uh, but I'm proud of the fact, for instance, that two of my bills, the SHIP Act and the Iran-China Energy Sanctions Act, are part of this package targeting Iranian petroleum. $88 billion in increased oil sales since Joe Biden took office. That money is being used to fund Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and the terror attacks against Israel. This is the type of work we need to engage in. It requires bipartisanship and a willingness to compromise. And Congressman Lawler, very quickly, because we're out of time, are you concerned that if there is a fight over the speakership, it will be sending a message to voters that Republicans cannot govern? Look, I think it obviously undermines uh, our ability to, to get the job done here. Uh, but the issues are what they are. People are concerned about affordability. They're concerned about the border. They're concerned about crime. I'm not concerned about the impact on the elections because the reality is voters will have distinct choices in each of these districts. I know in my district, I'm running against Mondaire Jones, a radical progressive who believes in open borders, who called ICE agents racist, who wants to defund the police. So I'm not concerned about the consequences of this. This is more about our government, uh, and the American people, all of us, Republicans and Democrats, have an obligation to govern. Let's pass the aid package tomorrow. Let's n not allow for chaos and dysfunction to reign supreme over the House. Republicans and Democrats need to work together to put an end to it. All right, Congressman Lawler, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.